Welcome to Bradshaw's Grief Resource Center series. This topic is on suicide, the preventable death. Most suicides can be prevented. Unfortunately for the majority of people, we do not understand what are the warning signs, what are the signals. Ninety-some percent of people do not really want to die. Suicide is a cry for help. But because there's still a stigma around suicide, people are not willing to ask for help because they feel that there must be something wrong or what will people say or what will people think about them. Suicide is not one thing. Oftentimes it is a number of things that build and build and build to the point where they can no longer cope or adjust. It is what I oftentimes call deep psychological pain. It could also be physical pain incorporated, where that pain becomes so intense that they are looking for an escape. They are looking for a way to deal with that pain. Some may turn to alcohol and drugs as a way to mask that pain. And at some point, that may not even work. For others, they may feel that the only choice they have to escape that pain is by death. So it is crucial and imperative that we understand what are the warning signs. Too many times we see on the news when we hear about suicide, the media will put up a phone number who to call in case of a crisis, but they never talk about warning signs. So what I like to do in this topic is just give you some warning signs, some things to look for, especially right now during this pandemic when people feel even more alone and more isolated. People who talk about suicide, even joking about it. I wish I were dead. I won't see you tomorrow. Maybe I would be better off if I were dead. Now, you might think they're joking or you might think they're not serious, but it might be an indicator that something's going on in that person's life. Take it seriously. Giving things away. All of a sudden, they start giving things away, prized possessions, and you don't understand why they're giving these certain things away. Withdraw and isolation. They begin to withdraw from family and friends. They begin to isolate. They don't go out. They stay in more. They seem a little bit more sad and depressed. Change in physical appearance. They no longer maybe groom themselves or shower or take care of themselves anymore. Increase religious concerns. All of a sudden they begin to ask questions about God and is there really a heaven? And if I die, will I go to heaven? Where will my spirit or will, where will my soul go? It is important to look at that. Change in attitude how they react, change in school and work performance is important. Antisocial or delinquent or destructive behavior. All of a sudden they start to change the way they act and the way they do things. Those are some very basic, simple things to look for. Some personal or psychological changes might be the depressive symptoms such as hopelessness and helplessness or haplessness. Hopelessness where they don't see much of a future, that there's nothing else to live for. Helplessness where they feel no matter what I do, I fail or I'm helpless and feel that their self-esteem is gone or I'm no longer able to take care of my family. Maybe I would be better off if I were dead. Anxiety, distress, worry worry about the future, worried about who's going to take care of the family, worried about finances. 
irritability, hostility, impulsivity, violence are all things to seriously take a look at. Risk-taking and thrill-seeking, making final arrangements, and finally beginning to acquire means. If we recognize anything, it is important that we take it seriously. It is a signal that they are giving that they need help. So if you ever suspect someone might be suicidal, these are some basic tips. One, ask directly to that person, are you thinking of taking your life? You're not putting the thought in their head. They already have that thought, if that's what they really feel. They may say, no, but I'm really feeling sad, and I'm really feeling depressed. I just don't know if I want to live or not live. Ask direct questions. If they say no, talk with them. Don't moralize, don't judge, but find out what's going on inside and encourage them to seek professional help. If they say, yes, they are, ask them if they have thought about a means, if they thought about what they might do, if they have a plan. If they have a plan and have means, then you need to take it extremely serious. See if they will turn over the method, the means that they have. And if not, then seek professional help, and if need be, call 911. It is better to preserve life than a friendship. They may be angry with you down the road, but if they're not willing to turn over whatever method they may have, then something is going on. Like I said, suicide is a cry for help. Who's really listening to that person? It is important. In, Min in the United States, several years ago, there were roughly 48,000 suicides. Some of those may have been able to be prevented, but we also know that there were probably well over a million in some people who attempted suicide. The vast majority of people do not want to die. There's something internally going on that they're trying to seek out help. But like I said earlier, because of stigma and because of societal norms, they're sometimes embarrassed, especially men. Men take their lives four times more than women do. So it is important to help men learn to talk about their feelings, talk about their emotions and what's going on, and not to keep them suppressed. There are a number of organizations that you can contact. The Suicide Hotline, NAMI. You can contact the local hospital if you feel someone's at risk. But it is important that if you recognize that someone is suicidal, get them help. What they're really doing is they're trusting you with what's going on in their lives, and now it's up to you to help. Remember, listen, don't moralize, don't judge, stay with that person, let them know that you care and that you love them, and that you will be present to help them through this difficult time in their life.